Let's get back to the basics of induction for a minute. And a simple case of induction, simply a magnetic field in the board like this. One more row. And then our metal loop that we'll use to think about induction. And just to simplify things so we don't have to worry about something moving, let's actually just say that the magnetic field, the magnitude of the magnetic field is changing in time. This is another way you can have induction. So let's just say the magnetic field is increasing as it points in. That way nothing has to move. If no, even, if those nothing, even though nothing is moving, the flux, the B dot dA inside the loop is increasing. So we know that there's going to be induction and we can think about the direction. If the field is increasing that way, we want to oppose that, so we want to make a field this way. And by the right hand rule, that means there's current going around the loop like that. That's induction. So an EMF is induced, current flows, but there is no magic, okay? Why does the current flow? It's not magic, it's charges, charges start to move. There has to be a reason charges would move. Why do they move? Um, it's not the B cross V force because initially they were just sitting there. The magnetic field isn't making them move. They're being induced to move by the changing magnetic field. If a magnetic field isn't making them move, it must be an electric field. It must be that an induced electric field is created in the loop. So if we look inside this thing, and instead of just writing an I and an arrow, we draw a bunch of little charge carriers, which we'll think of as positive. Well, the only way that they're going to move is an electric field. That's the only thing that can push them. If it's not the B field, there has to be an E field. So there's an E field circulating around the loop in the same direction that the current would go. And we know the induction occurs all the way around the loop. So this E field is all the way around the loop. So a changing magnetic field actually creates an electric field inside the loop, an induced electric field. Now, this doesn't make it any less real. It is a real electric field. By the definition of an electric field, it's just if a charge is sitting there and it feels a force, that's an electric field, F equals QE. So there's nothing fake about this field. It's real. Here's the weird part. Even if the loop is not there. That's worthy of two exclamation points because we're saying that whether there's a loop there or not is irrelevant. Because what is an electric field? An electric field doesn't require the test charge to be there. An electric field is just a property of space at that location. So if there's no loop there, there's no charge carriers there, it doesn't matter. It still creates an electric field around this loop. There is a real electric field in that loop. You might say, what about this smaller loop? Well, there's a real electric field in this smaller loop as well. You'll get a real electric field swirling around when you have a changing magnetic field. That is really what's happening in induction. So let's see how that lets us rewrite Maxwell's equations and see if we can figure out how this really works. 